Today we're going to continue on, or actually start, sorry, the Learn CSS box model by building a Rothko painting. Um, and if you're like me, I have no idea what a Rothko painting is, um, but it looks like a is it rectangular art, um, I guess, is, is their style. So anyway, let's go dive in and start the project and have a look what's going on here. So here's a preview of what we're going to build. Um, it looks quite pixelated, I'm not sure. Um, if you, you can see that, but anyway, there's a load of blocks and some shapes here um, and different border radiuses, as I can see. So yeah, let's start coding. So step one, um, yeah, it's the usual now, um, set up the HTML um, file, so doc type, and that's HTML like so. And oops, we need to have an HTML element. <coughs> Um, slash HTML and oh sorry inside that <clears throat> we need a lang of en like so there we go cool so step two within the head element add a meta tag meta and that's the char set equals utf-8 and close that off and we want a title title and this is going to be Rothko painting and then within the body element we want to add an image so image tag the source will be equal to this link here or this image it's a png file um, just hosted online and i think it's self-closing so there we go we've got our image here so let's check that. Um, okay, it's UT, ah, UFT I've put, so UTF8. There we go. <clears throat> cool, step three now. In the CSS box model, every HTML element is treated as a box with four areas. Imagine you receive a box from your favorite online retailer. The content is the item in the box, or in our case, a header or a paragraph or an image element. Um, so this is the box model and um, here's the content. So anything within this blue box is the content itself. So we just want to change the source attribute um, from this one to this one. So let's do that here. This is diagram two. And there we go. Now we've got padding and border being displayed on our image as well. Cool, so step four. So the content surrounding a space um, so surrounding the sorry, the content is surrounded by a space called padding, and that's this green box here, and that's similar to how bubble wrap separates an item from the box around it. So think of the border like a cardboard box that the item was shipped in, and padding is just between the inside of the box and the content itself. And now we're going on to the next diagram here. So that's quite cool actually that we're obviously changing the image as we go rather than just them showing us different images. Um, but yeah, let's go to the next challenge. Step five, so <clears throat> margin here, and that's this um, sort of sand colored box is the area outside of the box that can be used to control the space between other boxes or elements. So if you can imagine there's another box on the left hand side, um, the margin is the space between um, that other border, um, let's say. Here, the bottom element has a larger top margin. So you can see on this one, the margin is larger, um, at least on the just the top side. And obviously, if you you might know from um, the previous videos, we can set margin and padding um, on the top right, bottom left, um, sort of of the, I guess, the components um, or the elements that we're styling. So they just want us now to remove the image element. Cool, so step six, add a div element in the body. <clears throat> so like so, and we want to set the class equal to canvas. And this will act as a canvas for the painting. Perfect. Step seven, before you can start styling the div, you need to link your CSS to your HTML. So you can see here we're in the head tag and we want to create a link and we want to set um, the rel, let's do that first, to style sheet and the href to dot slash styles dot css. 
And I think that's self-closing, so that should pass. There we go. And now you can see we've got our styles.css file, um, so, and that's linked to our HTML. So it's time for CSS. So even though your div has no text, it will still be treated as a box with content. So write a CSS rule that uses the canvas class selector, so dot canvas, and we'll open up curly braces and set its width to 500 pixels. And that should pass that test. There we go. Um, step nine, add the height property. So height and the value of 600 pixels. And as you can see, we still can't see anything, but the this div with a class of canvas itself does have those properties. And we'll be able to see that now when we set the background color to this hex value here. So let's just do that. And there we go. There's our box or our canvas. So that's width of 500 and a height of 600 pixels. Cool. Step 11, every painting needs a frame, so wrap the canvas element in another div, and we'll call that div um, class frame. So div class equals frame, and to close it off, we'll go down here, div, uh, oops, and that needs to be a closing div. And what I'm just gonna do for clarity is to nest, or sort of put a bit of space or tab um, for these inside divs, and that's generally how you structure HTML as you might know by now. And finally for this one, step 12, write a new rule using the dot frame class selector. So we'll do dot frame and use the border shorthand to give the frame a solid black border with a pixel, uh, sorry, width of 50 pixels. So normally do the width first, so 50 px solid, um, and then we can just use the keyword black and that will give it the black border. And there we go, that all passes. Cool, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope it helps and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.